All right, so you guys all know uh, Iller Mike. He is half of Run the Jewels. Uh, they put out really good music, of course. Um, and if you don't know, you know him, which you probably do if you're a Bernie supporter, you pay attention to politics because he is somebody who was a huge, I repeat, huge Bernie Sanders supporter back in the 2016 primary. And really, for any sort of public figure who supported Bernie Sanders, period, let alone support him. Basically, Mike was basically like an ambassador for Bernie. He was out there campaigning for him, supporting him, pushing him. Like, shout out to Iller Mike for that one, man. Big shout to him. A really good dude for that. Um, because if you remember in 2016, dude, celebrities and people like him and of his stature and higher were lining up behind Hillary Clinton. It was really tough to really get any sort of serious endorsements for Bernie Sanders. Other than people like, you know, there are a couple of exceptions like Danny DeVito and Mark Ruffalo. So shout out to those guys as well. But if you were somebody who's like of high stature at the time and you endorse Bernie, you automatically have like super massive points, okay, of, of respect from me personally. And it's because I went through that. I remember how difficult it was for people to come out like that. And so he was really dope for that. So. He's somebody who's sounds kind of close to a socialist almost, you know, I don't know, he's pretty social democratic, I would say, so I don't know how exactly how far he goes in terms of his leftness, but he was on uh, Bill Maher's show, Real Time with Bill Maher, now Bill Maher has really been a controversial figure as of late, okay, a lot of lefties who used to be fans of him don't like him, Kyle Klinsky, who says that basically Bill Maher was one of his biggest influences in terms of getting into politics. He hates him now. He just completely hates him. And for good reason, I would say. The only shred of good thing that there is with Bernie, although with an example that we see here, it's pretty tough to really give him the full credit for that. But he has said he's supporting Bernie Sanders, and he did support him the last time around. So, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due on that. But pretty much everything else, I have to say, Bill Maher has really sucked. Um, and there's been some stuff going on with, you know, Rashida Tlaib, as well as, you know, Ilhan going on. And he's been very poor on that, you know, whole issue as a whole uh, for forever now. So, um, Iller Mike is on the Real Time Show, okay? And he really takes it to Bill Maher because Bill Maher tries a really, really bogey Destiny talking point. Destiny, Mayor Pete, whoever you want to use. Who uses this stupid talking point against free college education. Uh, this idea that somehow... The people not going to college are the ones subsidizing the people going to college. So, let's go ahead and hear out this clip, and then we will jump in and talk about it. Mike, what did you think of Cardi B's summit with Bernie Sanders? Man, that, they I, had a, I would have got a was week's pay to I was so encouraged, there. because this is really? a country that prompt well this is a country of vagrants unwanted and protesters in our inception right <laughs> yeah. we're, you know, we're, we're, we're essentially right. the hood of the united kingdom right. um and no, that's australia <laughs> yeah yeah i know right yeah, that's right australia Rodney would be like ghetto um, yeah. <laughs> but cardi represents a young afro latina woman from a from poor and working class background who has now used her platform when she could have become far more conservative, made her money and walked away. She used it to engage not only for her own self-interest, but the self-interest on behalf of her people. She's now probably in a 40, 35 to 45% tax bracket. And she said, I don't mind paying my money. I just would like my money to go other places besides military. I'd like it to go in education. And I think that's what my grandparents wanted when they moved from the Deep South. That's what your parents want. So for me, seeing her participate in it, invigorates me because I know other young women, 18, 19, 21 years old, who may not be going to college for four and six year degrees, but maybe going to beauty school, maybe working menial jobs. It makes them okay, active. Okay, well, that's an interesting point then, because Bernie, who you support. Yes. Okay, he's for free college. Yes. I've raised this point before. Why should people who don't go to college be subsidizing the ones who do? Because the people who go to college are going to be making a lot more money. College is not free. Somebody's nope. going to be paying for that. Nope college. I don't understand why the people who get the benefit of it shouldn't yeah. be paying for college it. College and trade school. And this is from a dad who has had children who went to both. My oldest son went to Omnitech trade and learned computer engineering and things of that nature and sound engineering. My daughter did two years. She did the same two years twice on me in Savannah State. 20, <laughs> you know, 21 grand. <laughs> I love her. That's my baby. Really right? sticks in but, your mind there, doesn't but, it? Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> but, but he offered college and trade school. Part of being an American is being a steward for the next generation of Americans. My grandparents worked in fields. My grandmother went to college. My grandfather toiled on a blue collar job so that my sisters and I could then have post-secondary education. 
I don't mind, as an American now, investing in the greater America. If we're going to build an infrastructure, you got to have carpenters and electricians. If that's one of your children, that's fine by me. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, Mike makes a really, really good point there, of course. And so he's talking about how basically, you know, he's essentially his point there is just sort of like, it's a structural change that needs to be done. Now, he could have also offered up more points for that, actually, that this whole the idea that basically people who aren't going to college are subsidizing people. The idea is like that, oh, like the poor people are the ones subsidizing people going to college. Uh, there are multiple points to sort of combat that one of uh, you know the main one i would say being that if you look at where the actual funding for free college education comes from which is a wall street speculation tax uh you know the vast 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 majority of stocks are really held by an incredibly small amount of the top of of the country and really you know when you really dig into a deep obviously to really make any sort of serious money from stocks you have to have a lot of money to insert and, you know, the situation of vast majority of folks in the United States is they simply don't have the funds to do that. So you're really talking about a really, really, really small chunk of rich, powerful people in the United States who have their, uh, you know, uh, holdings in stocks as of right now. So uh, they're the ones who are going to be paying for it. They're the ones who are going to be paying the Wall Street speculation tax. So immediately that whole argument is completely bunk. It's complete bogey, complete bogus, uh, you know, up the front. But... I think the overall arching point and the overall point that, you know, uh, Mike is trying to get at here is like, dude, and this is the thing is like, it's structural change. Okay. Like if, if some rich people are going to benefit from this sort of structural change, which a lot of rich people, most rich people don't either take out loans or B, they just go to private schools, which is not covered. Private uh, institutions are not covered by Bernie's free college for all plan. Just so you guys know. Uh, so either of those two things are, are possibilities. Uh, you know, but also let's say a couple of rich people do get free education. Who cares? It's structural change. If a couple of rich people get to get free education, I don't give an F. I don't care. I really don't because if everybody gets it, that's all that matters to me. That's the thing about structural change. And we ain't here. We're not here for no, you know, lollygagging nonsense, half, you know, baked sort of uh solutions here we're here for some real change if we're gonna get some real change we're gonna need to do things like have free college education um and the point mike was making there was of course very good as well um and you know i also find it hilarious this is also another point is that like this idea of like why don't more uh this sort of perpetuates the system because it's like okay so your argument is basically that oh look the people who are going to college are now being subsidized by the poor of the the backs of the wor of working people and the poor people. Um, it's hilarious because it's like, why do you think there are more poor people who are not going to college? It's because of how much money it costs. So you're literally perpetuating the system by continuing this like spiral. You're not actually helping or incentivizing or like freeing up people to actually go to college. You're not actually doing that. Uh, because what you're doing is you're you're basically making it so that poor people will continue to not be able to go to college. Because how can poor people go to college if you make it free? If you make it accessible for people without money? So if your worry is that, you know, people who aren't going to college are going to be subsidizing people going to college, you know, you're clearly sort of, you're perpetuating the cyclical, uh, you know, ruthless process in which, those poor people that you're referencing who are, you know, I guess, subsidizing in your dumb mind, people going to college, you're perpetuating this system in which the poor people will still not go to college. You're not really offering a solution for anything. You're kind of just trolling. Um, and that's certainly what the Hillary camp was doing back in 2016 where they were just trolling. Um, and that's the thing is like a lot of these people who say this kind of stuff are not being serious. It's sort of just to throw a wrench into the whole idea. And what I mean by that is it's not like those people are like, you know, I, I see where you're coming from. I totally understand what you're saying. But you know what? I want to offer some constructive criticism, amends that we can make that I would then agree with your point. No, 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 no. None of that. It's like, no, I'm concerned trolling, and I'm instead trying to basically just throw a wrench into your entire plan. That's what the Hillary camp was doing back in 2016. That's what their goal was. Their goal was to be like, no, <laughs> you're going to, they're like, oh, Bernie's going to plan is going to, uh, give Donald Trump's kids free college. Like, you're not being serious at that point. Like, you don't care. 
you're just saying that just to oppose but it's not like you actually are a good faith actor you're being a bad faith actor and you're basically taking part in almost a smear in that situation but if donald trump's kids get free education but everyone else does too who cares it's structural change i don't care um and then also to touch on the cardi b situation that they talked about here in the beginning um you know i agree with mike there as well i think that cardi definitely could have gone a route of like i'm not going to pay my you know i'm i'm going to advocate for lower taxation etc etc because i'm rich now and i could i have a lot of cash um you know and i i definitely agree with that and i think that in the back and forth between cardi b and tommy laren uh people misunderstood cardi b's comment I don't know whether they genuinely misunderstood her comment or if they purposefully, you know, as bad faith actors did this, but they essentially were like, you know, because Cardi B made a comment to someone responding saying, you know, I probably am paying for your health care because I pay a bunch of taxes. And people thought that they were like, oh, wow, well, Cardi B, why are you complaining about taxes when you support Democrats and Bernie Sanders? When her point was, is like, I'm probably paying for your health care because I pay a lot of taxes. She wasn't complaining about her taxes. And she had, you know, sent out, I believe it was a tweet recently where she had just said, like, I don't mind paying taxes. I want to see that money rerouted to things that, you know, I'll actually be able to see. Free college education, for example. Ending homelessness, which only costs $20 billion. $20 billion is like a fart from the federal government. Seriously. The federal government can fart out $20 billion. And imagine fixing the homeless crisis. Do you have any idea the effect that that would have? Not only on our society, but think about the GDP raises too. Because once they get homes, they can actually re-enter the workforce. They're not out in the streets. Like, how could you not support something like that? What is wrong with you if you don't support it? How do you not see all of the insane amounts of benefits of the boost in GDP? The cleaning of the community so people are actually in, you know, have homes and shelter instead of being out in the streets? You know, like, sitting out on the streets. Like, come on. How would you not support something like that? Um, and so, big shout-out to Mike, you know. I know he got into some controversy last year in the summer. It was, like, about a year ago with the whole situation. But um, let's not take away from his sort of effect that he's had on the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign as well as just championing progressive values. So, big, big shout-out to Mike here. And... I would say I'm disappointed in Bill Maher, but to be honest, I have no expectations for Bill whatsoever at this point.